again. Can I help you with something else? You already took care of Mr. House? Wow, you work fast. Of course, ask away. Really? Talk about diplomatic skills. I mean, just not getting blown up was a success. Now they'll only blow up the right sorts of people. That's what matters. That's one down, four to go. <laughs> Maybe they'll be devoured by giant scorpions. All sorts of things could happen to them out there. That's two down, three to go. Wow, that is amazing. You are just a hero. I am serious. That's three down, two to go. A cannibalism problem? Really? I'm so glad you weren't eaten. That's four down. Just one to go. Really? That's... Well, that's a surprise. They'll really want to blow me up. But maybe dumb machines like me ought to get blown up and scrapped for salvage. Who knows? Not me. That accounts for all the tribes you needed to get to know. Mr. House is out of the picture and you have the platinum chip? Wonderful. Let's go. Hi! This is big, huh? A very big moment. Here goes. I'll just take that platinum chip off your hands. Thanks. Wish me luck. had quite a setup here. I can access his data banks and view telemetry on every Securitron on the network. Wait, so that's what the platinum chip does. Interesting. Mr. House had a whole demonstration planned for you. Just head downstairs to the lowest level to check it out. You'll see. Step closer to the demonstration area, please. Okay, so you're familiar with Securitrons by now, obviously. I mean, some of your best friends are Securitrons, right? <laughs> our titanium alloy housing does a good job of protecting our delicate electronic insides from small arms fire and shrapnel. Our left arm contains an X-25 Gatling laser, quite deadly against soft targets in medium range. That looks like fun. And for close range suppression and crowd control, we have this handy dandy 9mm submachine gun. Nice. All of this is old hat, right? Here is where it gets interesting. Turns out that those are our secondary weapons. All this time we've been running the Mark I operating system, which doesn't have drivers for our primary weapons. Imagine! Now watch this. I'm downloading the Mark II OS that will make your quite a difference. With the M235 missile launcher, we can engage ground and air targets at long range. And a rapid-fire GPA launching system makes us deadly in close-range engagements. Woo! Look at that! The OS upgrade also includes drivers for our onboard auto repair systems. Just try to hurt us now! Altogether, this software upgrade confers a 235% increase in combat effectiveness per unit. New Vegas finally has soldiers worthy of protecting it. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. You can come back up and see me or be on your way. I know you're a busy person. You 
did a super job wrapping things up. And I'm not just saying that because I have to. This gadget I'm handing you is called an override module. Mr. House had two of these made years and years ago. Just like him to think ahead. Take the module to the El Dorado substation and attach it to the power control terminal. I'll handle the rest. Great! When this is taken care of, we'll be all set for the Legion to make its move. Patrol in the Mojave almost makes you wish for a Stay out of the control room and enclosure. Nuclear winter. We won't go quietly. The Legion can count on that. survived his visit to Hoover Dam. Nice one. Now, moving on. Don't you love seeing the Lucky 38 all lit up? Sign of things to come. Exciting news. The Legion's massing troops in a staging area east of the dam. Attack imminent. Monster of the East ready to roll. Well, some of Mr. House's projections predict a moderate probability of civil instability subsequent to the NCR being driven from the Vegas region. One of the mitigating contingencies he planned was to enlist the followers to provide increased medical aid throughout the region. Just seems like it might help keep things stable when we go independent. Not that I know what I'm talking about. So I've been looking over Mr. House's force projections and running some calculations. It turns out there's only one way for us to win this battle and make it stick. We have to render Hoover Dam inoperable. That's exactly why this will work. Just hear me out. You remember how the Securitron army at the fort got destroyed? For very, very good reasons, of course. Well, the problem is that's left us with enough Securitrons to drive off a weakened NCR for us, but not enough to keep them from coming back. So what we do is take away the whole reason why they'd want to come back. Smart, huh? Not the whole thing, thank goodness. That'd be really hard. All you have to do is destroy the power generators. Without the generators, Hoover Dam's just a big bunch of concrete. Take this override module. It's just like the one you used at the El Dorado substation. Install the override module on the terminal in the power control room. I'll disable the generator fail-safes, and you can do the rest. Good luck! See you at the dam. The Vegas trip are still available. We must get to the control room and install the override chip. Ready? Steady? Ready. Time to fight. That's all.
Ready, steady, fighting. Starting combat. Just kidding. That's all. Smart move for the kings to back down. They didn't know who they were messing with. This is neat. From this console, I could have routed the dam's power input over to the fort and activated that dormant army of Securitrons. So, go ahead and blow up the dam's generators. And when that's done, head back upside and finish off the Legion and the NCR. Cessation of hostilities complete. An envoy of Vegas, yet you carry yourself for battle. If so, you cannot truly be of that city of cowards. I see you fight with words, like all beneath the flag of the bear. Let us hope your skill with weapons proves greater. So you seek quarter? Terms of surrender? Our roads into NCR are hung with the bodies of those who attempted to negotiate with us. Save your speeches. We will take Hoover Dam and move forward until our feet crush the setting sun beneath them. Hoover Dam has never seen the mass strength of the East. Only legates such as Graham, who deserved the fire Kaiser blessed him with. Now I am here, and make markers of your people as the Legion carves its way west. You speak in circles. What of the East? I am the East, and I will prove it this day. The 
victory here shall be swift. Our forces shall take the dam, secure it, then build a road west on the bodies of the NCR. The east will hold. Once across the Colorado, nothing to rival Hoover Dam remains. Your weakness? You seek to thwart me by claiming the Legion is too strong for you? That does not mean we would not succeed. The East was a hard-fought campaign. Even now, Kaisar drew too much of the Legion's For blood needed this. Hoover Dam is but a place. I will not have it be the gravestone of the Legion, whether quickly, or as you describe, slowly, by attrition. As for wisdom, there is wisdom in your words, man of the West. Know that I shall return east. I shall not remain there forever. On that day, the strength of the bear shall be tested. If the West is one day filled with ones such as you, perhaps it shall be a worthy fight indeed. Hmm. My coming would have saved you, set your people free in ways they cannot see. War would have tested them, broken the weak with its violence, yet allowing the strong to arise. Violence gave you that strength, awakened you. I can see it upon your face, where two bullets left their mark. Perhaps it is unfortunate Wolpex was not here to hear your words. Something tells me you would prove more than his match. Until the day when our armies meet again, Courier. I shall wait for you on the battlefield. Bad guys dealt with. Caesar on the cross. Been a long time since I've seen the kind of work you've laid down today. A damn long time. And the screams of those Legion bastards as they kick dirt running east like a choir of angels to my ears. Speaking of, that crazy light show over the fort? What the fuck was that? Some kind of thumb of God you called down? Amazing. Fucking amazing. Could use a hundred of you. Just scatter you over the east like jacks. Give those plum fucks the what for. And, um, well, <laughs> these, uh, these boys with you? <laughs> Hello there, Smiley. Guess it ain't no secret how you, uh, I say, can you ask them to put their weapons down? I was just reaching in my coat to give you a cigar. I would sooner spit on the grave of my dead mother than let some courier walk the wasteland fuck talk to me like that. Who the hell do you think you are? Looking to cash your chips to the sound of NCR bullets, huh? I can oblige. Look, I know you're riding high right now, but let me tell you, you ain't pissing on me right now. You're pissing on the bear. You've been far enough west, I'm guessing, to know how far that claw stretches. Fuck with the bear and... You want me to make tracks out of here? Head back west? Tail between our legs? No. 
I came for a fight today. And if you're looking to make me budge, you better have a damn good left hook or I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. But I wasn't expecting a fight when I came up here. And now that we're talking, I don't like the sound of things. Do you know what you're doing? Making a nation like you think you're doing ain't like chowing down on a pile of fancy lad snack cakes. Think you got the guts to carve out a frontier? Build towns, protect the roads, run supplies, train troops? suckered by some road jockey. Should have watched the flank while Caesar's best was making all that noise. I know what those robots of yours can do on a bad day, and I'm not eager to toss lies at them just to make a point. But if you're taking this place, you better hope you can hold it. I'll give my superiors my opinion, but I don't think they're going to listen. So if NCR comes at you, and it will, pray you're ready. I promise you, our situation's reversed, I'd see you hang. Come on, men. We're moving out. You did a super job wrapping things up. And I'm not just saying that because I have to. I didn't want to make a big deal about this until after we won, but... Well, I found some code snippets in one of Mr. House's data banks that will let me, um, reprogram my personality. To be a little more assertive, basically. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And it's going to take me a while, so it'll seem like I'm offline. But don't worry, everything will be okay. I've updated the Securitron's targeting parameters, so they know what to do. Vegas will be protected. So that's where I'll be, off making a few changes. And I, I guess I'll see you around. We accomplished a lot together. It was fun. Take care. And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again, and the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. The courier, with the aid of Yes Man, drove both the Legion and the NCR from Hoover Dam, securing New Vegas' independence from both factions. With Mr. House out of the picture, the remaining Securitrons on the Strip were hard-pressed to keep order. Anarchy ruled the streets. When the fires died, New Vegas remained, assuming its position as an independent power in the Mojave. Supporting the ideals of independence, the courier was recognized as the man responsible for a truly free New Vegas. He ensured Mr. House's tyranny was broken, and neither Caesar's Legion nor NCR would ever gain control over New Vegas. Tabitha and Rhonda went east, through Caesar's land. Occasionally, tales of their exploits found their way back west, though few believed them. Eventually, the stories concerning the duo were collected and published, and proved to be quite popular with children. Invigorated by his travels with the courier, Raul once more took up his guns in memory of his lost Rafaela. Soon after, the Mojave was filled with tales of the ghost vaquero who hunts down those who prey on the weak. Though the wasteland became anarchic after Hoover Dam, the boomer's display of power dissuaded fortune seekers from attempting to penetrate Nellis. Due to their temporary truce, the Brotherhood allowed the NCR to retreat from the Mojave wasteland without incident. In the relative peace that followed, Brotherhood patrols appeared along major roads, harassing travelers over any bits of technology they had. Despite her departure from the group, the Brotherhood's peace treaty with NCR came as some relief to Veronica. Though she remained friendly with surface patrols, she was never again permitted to enter the bunker she once called home. Fearing for the safety of anyone she associated with, she continued her solitary life as a scavenger.
But reports would emerge from Mojave scientists and social workers of old equipment miraculously repaired and research notes mysteriously completed. Their leaders destroyed by the courier, the fiends scattered throughout the wasteland. Without the organization of motor runner, cook cook, violet, and driver Nephi, they were easy prey. After the courier ensured New Vegas remained free, the followers found that independent Vegas was even more unstable and violent than before. Old Mormon Fort became excessively burdened by the influx of patients, struggling to provide even the most basic of services. Arcade was proud to have been one of the defenders who helped repel the Legion from Hoover Dam. Still, he was proud the area freed from the shackles of the NCR and Mr. House. Though independence for New Vegas was not all he hoped it could be, Arcade used his enclave knowledge and technology to keep order wherever he could. With New Vegas' independence formally declared, Good Springs thrived. More travelers stopped by Good Springs on their way to and from the Strip, and the locals grew prosperous from the traffic. Cass lived to see the courier bring down three armies, and by her count, that was three more than she'd expected. She kept quiet about that, though. During the Battle of Hoover Dam, the Great Khans quickly evacuated Red Rock Canyon and headed north and east into the plains of Wyoming. There, they reconnected with the followers of the Apocalypse and rebuilt their strength. Bolstered by ancient knowledge of governance, economics, and transportation, they carved a mighty empire out of the ruins of the Northwest. Thanks to the Courier and Lily, a cure for the Nightkin schizophrenia was found shortly after Dr. Henry's experiment concluded. Nightkin and other super mutants in the wasteland flocked to Jacobstown, and the town became known as a haven where a mutant could find peace. Lily continued to take her medicine at half doses, and although she remembered her grandchildren, her mind remained muddled and confused. Eventually, she parted ways with the courier and traveled west, seeking the remnants of her past. Following the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, Freeside came to be known as one of the more stable areas in the region. Ironically, NCR refugees found Freeside safer than most of the rest of New Vegas, where resentment still lingers. After Ray's brain was transplanted into Rex's cybernetic body, it took Rex some time to adjust to the old scrapyard dog's memories. Eventually, Rex's mind settled peacefully, melding his own memories with that of long travels with old Lady Gibson. Shaped up by the courier's advice, the misfits distinguished themselves during the Legion's attack on Camp Golf. Mags was finally promoted to sergeant, and the rest of the misfits received an official commendation. They continued to serve with distinction for many years. Though Novak was a low-priority target for the Legion, many of Novak's citizens died in its defense. In the weeks that followed, several bright followers returned to Novak to help restore its defenses, allowing it to remain independent of NCR. Though NCR was withdrawing from the region, Boone remained in New Vegas, finding work as a security guard and caravan scout along the highways. While he might have preferred rejoining his old unit, Boone couldn't bring himself to abandon the city where he'd met his wife. The NCR, battered by the loss of the dam, were unable to devote any troops to retaking the correctional facility from the Powder Gangers. As a result, Powder Ganger raids on caravans became an unfortunate fact of life in the Mojave for years to come. With Cook dead, the Powder Gangers at Vault 19 fell apart. Those who weren't destroyed by the courier fled into the hills or attempted to work their way back through the Mojave wasteland. Few survived. Despite NCR's pledge to support Prim, they abandoned the town after their loss to the courier. Independent again, Prim operates much as it had before the powder gangs arrived, full of ups and downs. Despite distinguishing themselves during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, the Rangers' victory was short-lived due to the Courier's interference. Chief Hanlon personally directed the evacuation of the Rangers to Mojave Outpost as they fell back into NCR territory. 
Bitter over the waste of life in the Mojave, Hanlon stepped down from his post. After a campaign in which he denounced Oliver's and Kimball's hawkish, imperialist ways, Hanlon was elected as the senator of Reading. After their bold arrival at Hoover Dam, the remnants disappeared as quickly as they came. Legends of their power spread throughout the Southwest, a reminder of why people once feared the sight of vertebrates in the sky. And so the Courier's Road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes.